So we're out here um, taking the uh, photos in Richmond Park. Um, it's got a lot of interesting trees and a lot of interesting uh, scenery, so it should be quite good. And uh, I'll get into the camera and show you exactly what I'm doing. So we're currently in standard photo mode here, and you'll see that I have the grid lines, which we spoke about in the last video, uh, on the screen. And I'm lining up the tree and the horizon to be level with the grid marks. Um, just now I'm going to click on the exposure, um, which is just literally tap, <coughs> tapping on the screen, and that will auto, automatically set the exposure and the lighting. If you hold your finger down, you can lock the exposure and the autofocus. So what that means is that you can now um, alter the lighting separately to the exposure and without having a problem. So if you look on the right hand side, I can now turn the um, exposure up and down and have no problems with it. So in the next session, we uh, go into the pro mode and you'll notice that there's a load of square um, boxes there and that's there to um, allow you to auto focus and area focus rather than the point. So it's actually focusing on the area in the background. Um, I'm also using the grid lines again, just to line up the um, level with the sky and, uh, and, and the making sure that uh, everything is all level. Um, and the same thing, if you hold your finger down, you will be able to um, get the autofocus and the exposure. But with the difference here is you can actually split them. So you can actually put the auto uh, exposure at the top and it goes darker and put it on the bottom and it goes lighter. Um, it takes a reading from wherever you put it. So when you're in the pro mode, there are a few other options. So if you click on the manual, you can actually change the color temperature, the tint, the contrast, the saturation, highlights and shadows um, just before you take the photograph, which actually helps uh, bring out the uh, exposure better. So here again, I'm holding my finger down, splitting the exposure and the auto lock and auto focus, sorry. Um, so I'm focusing on the background and taking the exposure from the foreground, which actually makes everything is slightly darker, which brings out the clouds in the sky. And that will make your um, photograph a bit more punchy. Now what I'm going to do here is change the hold shutter button from picture to burst mode. And I'm going to show you what it does. It actually allows me to then take a series of photos. If you look on the bottom right hand corner, I hold my finger on the shutter button and you'll see that it will take 11 photos. There you go. That allows me now to be able to go into my gallery and if I slide my finger left and right on that particular photograph, I'll be able to select which photo I want to keep and which, um, which I can uh, discard. But that's how to take burst mode So that's pretty much the value of taking photographs um, with your mobile phone. I think now on, I'm going to take those photos away and I'll edit them and I'll show you what they look like and how to edit them using Snapseed. Hi, so now we're back home and we have uh, taken a few uh, photographs from Richmond Park, a lot of trees I must say, um, and I'm going to go through exactly how I'm going to edit those. Now, because it's on a mobile phone, um, use an app called snap speed now snap speed is really good it's very um, much like uh, lightroom in in the sense that it has a lot of features on it and you can actually do a lot quite a lot with it um, it's free so if you go over to the app store or um, whatever it is is it google app store or the apple app store um, it works on both uh, android and ios and download it it's free of charge and use that to do your editing of your of, of the photographs directly in your mobile phone so this is a great little app and i suggest that if you can just go over and uh, download it so here's here's what it looks like um, this is where you get it and as you can see it's got quite good reviews so 
Okay. So let's go into the phone. As I said, I've taken a lot of photographs of um, Richmond Park. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my images. Recent images. So let's have a look at what I've got here. Um, a lot of these are duplicates. I just took a lot of photographs. Let's take this one for argument's sake. Now, if I open that up in Snapseed, you can see the first thing it does is it comes up with this. Um, the reason I was saying about HDR and whether it's worth having is because if you click HDR here, go natural, it automatically creates the HDR for you. You can have the strength, saturation, and brightness for the HDR. And that will give you a lot of power. Literally, in your mobile phone, full editing power, pretty much the same as what you would get in the Adobe Suites. So I would, I would suggest, if you have the time, is go over, get Snapseed, do your editing with Snapseed, and play around with these. I'll tell you one feature that I found really interesting was the double exposures. It means you can actually add, let's say another image, let's put another image in there. And you can see that you've got both images one on top of the other. I think that's pretty amazing really. Not sure this is really the best use for it, but I thought I'd just show you, just so that you know. Um, then, of course, you can then export it to your phone. Um, you can share it with other apps and um, like online with Facebook and Instagram, whichever floats your boat. And that's really it.